OmniFocus 2 for iPad sports a modern new design, an expanded feature set, and integrated support for new functionality that Apple introduced with iOS 8. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of getting up and running with OmniFocus 2 for iPad, and we'll introduce you to the new interface and to some of the new and enhanced standard and pro features. And we'll look at system-wide OmniFocus integration that iOS 8 has made possible. We'll be delving into these new features and integration in more detail in articles, videos, and webinars at learnomnifocus.com. The first time you launch OmniFocus 2 for iPad, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen and will be given the option of either keeping your data in the cloud or storing it locally on this device. Generally speaking, I recommend keeping your data in the cloud so that you can access it from any Mac or iPhone. I'll tap on Keep Data in the Cloud, and then we'll tap OmniSync Server to log into an existing account. I'll log into the Learn OmniFocus account that is already populated with some sample data. OmniFocus will then ask for permissions related to notifications, location, and calendars. I'll go ahead and allow all three so that I can take full advantage of the system integrations that OmniFocus 2 for iPad provides. And then I'll click Done to complete the startup process. OmniFocus 2 for iPad has been completely redesigned and has a beautiful new user interface that feels right at home on iOS 8. When you first install OmniFocus from the App Store, you'll have access to all of the standard features. I'll explain how to upgrade to the Pro Edition and we'll showcase some Pro features later in this video. If your iPad is in a landscape or horizontal orientation, the left portion of the screen gives you access to the perspectives that come pre-installed with OmniFocus. If you were using your iPad in a portrait or vertical orientation, you can access this sidebar by tapping the button that appears in the upper left. Using this sidebar, you can access, for example, a list of items that are due soon by tapping on a specific date. And you can view flagged items by tapping on flagged. And as was the case in OmniFocus 1 for iPad, there's a handy review facility that you can use to help keep your system up to date. Swiping down on the left panel reveals additional features. You can manually sync with the OmniSync server, you can access app settings, and you can choose to show either default or all perspectives. We'll look at some of these features in more detail later in the video. When I tap on one of the sidebar items, such as projects, a bullet list appears at the top of the left panel. If I tap on this icon, drag handles appear that allow me to reorder the contents. For example, I can place the Acme Consulting folder above the Personal folder. Additionally, red delete icons appear that allow me to delete any of the folders and projects that appear in the left panel. I'll tap Done for now to go back to browsing through my projects. The outline view of whatever perspective, project, or context I'm viewing is displayed in the right panel. I can tap on the folder icons to hide and reveal the contents of a specific folder, and I can tap on the disclosure triangles to hide and reveal the contents of a project or a group. There's a list icon at the top of the right panel that allows me to conveniently delete and reorder the contents of the outline. For example, I'll move deposit check from Acme Corporation so that it appears above email weekly status reports. Tap done when you're finished making changes. Searching has been enhanced in OmniFocus 2 for iPad. Tap the magnifying glass to search the current outline, all remaining items, or everything in the database, including those items that have been marked complete. And then when you're finished searching, tap Done. The view icon allows you to specify what items you want to appear on the list. I'll change it to available so that I'm only seeing items that are currently available. You can create new items by tapping the plus button. Since I don't have a specific project or folder selected in the sidebar, I'm given the option to add a new project or folder at the top level or to create a new inbox item. If I were to select a specific project, for example, I'll go into the personal folder, then into fun and recreation and choose my plan trip to Ireland project. Tapping on the plus button gives me the option to create a new action in this project or to create a new inbox item. And the rightmost item in the toolbar gives me a convenient way of adding an item to the inbox. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create a new action. Let's say that I just talked to a client called John and promised to call him back at some point next week. I'll create an action of phone John. And at this point, I could add the action to my inbox by tapping save. Save plus allows me to save this action, then immediately create a new one. If you have the time, you may choose to process the item right away. I'll go ahead and assign this action to a project. So I'm going to put it into the uh, Squamish Realty, which is a single action list in my database. And I'm going to assign it a context of focus because I want to make sure that I'm in a focus state when I make this phone call. Since I promised this client I'd call them back next week, I'm going to set defer until to next Monday. So it'll be Monday, September 22nd. And then I'll set the due date to be the following Friday. So that would be Friday the 26th. I can also tap on the notes tab to add some notes, maybe some things to make sure that I talk about during this call. And I can tap on attachments to add a photograph or a voice recording. I'll go ahead and tap save to add this to my OmniFocus library. As I mentioned earlier, OmniFocus 2 for iPad takes advantage of some new features that Apple has introduced in iOS 8. For example, you can now view and even complete OmniFocus actions that are due soon from the Today view that appears when you swipe down from the top of the screen. To add OmniFocus to your list of Today items, tap the Edit button that appears below your Today items, and then tap the green plus button beside OmniFocus. Using the drag handles, you can position your OmniFocus tasks exactly where you want them. I'm going to place them right below the calendar. And now if I tap Done, I'll see a list of items that are due today. Let's say I just phoned Kern to wish him happy birthday. I can tap the status circle and mark this action complete even without having to switch back to OmniFocus. This is a great way to help ensure that commitments don't fall through the cracks, and it's handy being able to see your due actions alongside your calendar. OmniFocus 2 for iPad also takes advantage of the new sharing functionality that is supported in iOS 8. Let's say I'm looking at the page with the pre-order link for the new iPhone 6, and I'm not quite ready to order yet. Without leaving Safari, I can create an action in OmniFocus that references this web page and contains any text that I have selected. I'll start by selecting some text that I want to include in the note field, and then I'll tap the Share button. Before I can share this information with OmniFocus, I need to add the OmniFocus icon to the top row of icons by scrolling over to the right, tapping on the More button, and then turning OmniFocus on. I can also change the order. Since I'm likely going to be using OmniFocus frequently, I'm going to drag it to the top of the list. Now if I tap Done, I'll see that OmniFocus has been added. And tapping the OmniFocus icon allows me to create a new action in OmniFocus. The text on the web page I previously selected will be used as the default name of the action, as well as being stored in the Notes field. I'm going to change the name of the action by selecting All. I'm going to call the action Order iPhone 6 Plus. And at this point, I could assign a project or a context, but I'm going to leave these undefined for now and tap Save to add this to my OmniFocus inbox. Now if I switch back to OmniFocus, I'll see that the new action has been added to the inbox, and the selected text, along with a link to the web page I was looking at, are stored in the Note field for easy access when it comes time to order my new iPhone. All of the functionality that we've seen so far is available in the standard edition of OmniFocus. By upgrading to the Pro Edition, you can get access to even more features, most notably sidebar customization and custom perspectives. To upgrade, swipe down on the left pane and tap Settings, and then Upgrade to Pro. If you previously purchased OmniFocus 1 for iPad, you can upgrade to Pro free of charge. You'll just need to have OmniFocus 1 installed at the time you upgrade as proof of purchase. If you didn't purchase OmniFocus 1, you can access the Pro features by tapping on the Paid option. I just went ahead and upgraded to the new Pro edition. Let's take a look at the new features that are now available. Notice that a bullet list button now appears above the list of perspectives. I'll go ahead and tap on this button, and I can now scroll down to see a list of all of the perspectives that are available, including any project or context-based perspectives that have been created with the Pro Edition of OmniFocus 2 for Mac. 
I can specify which perspectives appear in the default left panel by tapping or untapping the star icon. I can also reorder the perspectives using the drag handles. For example, let's say that I want inbox to appear at the top of the list. I can just drag the drag handle and move inbox above forecast. You can also view details and make changes to any custom perspectives you created using the Pro edition of OmniFocus 2 for Mac. Any changes that you do make will be reflected on any other devices that you use. You can also create new perspectives in OmniFocus 2 for iPad. For example, let's say that I start all actions that involve making phone calls with phone colon and want to make a perspective that shows all available actions that contain this text. I'll start by tapping the New Perspective button to bring up the Edit Perspective window. I'll give this perspective a name of Phone Calls, and we'll choose the Phone icon. I'll group Actions by Project, and we'll filter the list to only show available tasks. I'll also choose to show Active Contexts, so I'm only seeing those contexts that are relevant. And finally, I'll specify that this context only show items that contain the text phone colon. Tapping Done will save this perspective. And by tapping the star beside phone calls, I can add it to my list of default perspectives. And now if I tap Done, you'll see that this new phone calls perspective has been added to the sidebar and I can tap on this Perspectives to conveniently see a list of all available phone calls grouped by project. If there are perspectives that you use less frequently and don't need to include among your favorites, you can still access them by swiping down on the left panel and then tapping on All Perspectives. I'll switch back to Favorites for now. I hope this gives you a good taste of what's possible in OmniFocus 2 for iPad. Other new features in this release include interactive notifications, the ability to edit and view estimated durations for actions, and background syncing. And on a technical note, OmniFocus 2 for iPad has been optimized to take advantage of 64-bit architectures and the latest processors in Apple products. Many thanks to the talented folks at the Omni Group for all the time, energy, and enthusiasm they put into this new release. Visit LearnOmniFocus.com to access a growing library of articles and videos, and to learn more about our Learn OmniFocus Live webinar series. I'm Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.